So there's a lot of back and forth that went into doing this tutorial and you will know what I mean when we jump into the tutorial section. So first we're gonna really go through the trailer and analyze what's really happening. And then we're gonna jump in and create the look that you saw at the beginning of the video. And if you wanna see an Oppenheimer look, smash a thumbs up. As soon as we get 500 likes, I'm gonna drop that tutorial. Without any further ado, let's jump in. All right, so I wanted to do two tutorials, one on Barbie look, another one on Oppenheimer. And I found something very strange when I got into doing the Barbie look. And let's go through this and it'll make a lot more sense. So this is the first shot, okay? So let's pull up our scope so we can see what's happening. And I'm gonna move this over here. So clearly we can see that there's a lot of magenta in our entire image, right? Like look at the vector scope, look at the waveform. But what's interesting is this. Look at where everything sits. So we assume that Barbie is just so pushed and out of control and lots of colors and lots of pop, but it's not really that, right? Look at like where everything is kind of living in the middle. Even if you look at the vector scope, the color is not really screaming, right? Like if I were to crank the saturation and make the colors go somewhere around here, in our head, we're thinking about Barbie like that. But when you see it, it's this. So what makes it that sensation where everybody's like do a look on barbie because this is just so out of control it's crazy it's clean but so poppy so what is it that's doing it and what i realized very early on is that 100 percent of it is art direction because if i were to take you on this shot right here and if i hover over on her skin let's uh, select our qualifier i'm gonna hover over here and you just look at the vector scopes right here and where that circle is appearing the saturation in the skin tone is the same as any normal movie, okay? Or even when you convert your image from Lock to Rec. 709, you're going to have probably more saturation, not less. What makes it so saturated and gives it that illusion that, oh my God, this thing is crazy, so clean and so saturated is right here. If I go here and look at like what this hue is or what this hue is, and all of this is either, you know, green screen or art direction set design that was the thing like when i saw it i'm like oh my god i can't really do a tutorial on how to get the barbie look but i can still do a tutorial on bringing more attention to this part of filmmaking especially with us colorists like we're handed off projects and people are just like make it look like x y and z but what they don't understand is that all the pre-production all the set design art direction costume design makeup everything that goes into making something is just so vital this movie really lives like right here in these three quadrants okay so like red magenta blues that's sort of like a psa for everybody that's like the modern day filmmaker watching this channel in these videos that you know really put a lot of thought into your pre-production and when you want a certain look um go about it a certain way to get that look and the reason why we don't see a lot of shadows is because that is not really barbie like the best way to see the source of light is look at the nose and like where the shadows cast it and there is none they're using massive sources of light right and it's just all even and all beautiful so it's like there's no circles under the eyes like nothing is looking ugly and that's like that poppy bright barbie look another thing that i notice is that if we just punch in and just like look at the pores on her skin they're not really covering that up or beautifying it they're just letting it be and that's why you have to bring stuff in resolve and analyze your shots check this out okay that is extremely interesting so when they come out to the real world when i've been on santa monica and in la it looks like this like the colors are just exactly like what it should be i mean look at the waveform there's barely any color there Look at the vector scope. Everything is so even. Look at the parade. It's perfectly even with the little bit of reds or just a little lifted, keeping us in that, like in these quadrants. They're not going to go in teal and orange, right? That's just going to be so jarring and it's not going to fit. And it kind of makes sense because they're showing like anything that's not Barbie is not interesting. So then like there, this just really feels like Rex 709 to me. Then like, look at this, right? So they're in jail and I wanted to kind of compare that. Let's go to the Dark Knight. And let's pull up the shots from jail and let's look at like what jail looked like in the dark night compared to Barbie. And like, look at the restricted color palette and like where everything lives. All of a sudden, like, oh my God, the dark night was so much more graded than Barbie. Now we're going to go to the shot that we're going to grade. Um, I've already gone ahead and graded it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to regrade it from scratch. So let's pull up this shot. 
And we're going to try to, in brightness, we're not going to get there because it's not realistic. But the reason why I like this shot is because if I pull it up and put it next to like what we got going on, I'm going to be taking like one of these hues, Pepto-Bismol like pink, and I'm going to be putting that here, right? Um, because we can't be unrealistic. We can't just go here because it's not going to happen. But if I were to show you my Rec 709, it's this, right? So this is my log. It's shot on red. This is my Rec 709. I'm going to delete all of this and kind of take you through like my mindset. So the first thing that I'm thinking about to get into this realm is just overall like lift up my image. So I'm going to go in my offset HDR palette. Global offset works like f-stops in your camera. So I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to lift it up about three quarters of a stop. So something like that. OK, that's not bad. The sequence is going to matter the way you set up your nodes. I'm going to create another node. And what I want to do is I want to bring this side down so it's leveled because if you look at this shot the lighting is very even and we already talked about it they kind of did that so it's not like too dramatic whereas we don't have that happening here right like the lighting is too dramatic and this is what i'm trying to tell you like this the example that i'm trying to give you is that the the square peg in a round hole that's what's really happening here like we're given this sort of footage and we have to make it look like barbie so we're gonna have to do a lot to get there we can still do it but i just want to kind of to give you a realistic scenario of like what we can and can't do. We have to pick and choose our battles here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, the next thing is going to be, let's create a gradient window and I'm going to do something like this. Not too crazy. Let's do shift H, pull it over here, uh, bring it to something like that, get rid of that. And then I'm just going to go under my gamma. I'm going to pull it down and uh, maybe go back into my window and spread it out a little bit more something like that, and then go back in my gamma and pull it down and keep it somewhere around here. So now it's it's kind of even between the two. That's going to be important. Um, I'm going to keep going in terms of my nodes. And what I'm going to do is over here, uh, I'm going to get into my contrast. OK, so I'm going to go in my curves. I'm going to move this over so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to pull this up. Uh, let's uh, bring this down somewhere around here. Let's make it bigger. And then here, what I want to do is uh, lift it up from the bottom a little bit, right? So like I want to lift it up something like this and uh, let's keep this up here so we can see what's happening. And then what I want to do is just like really get bold with it. So I'm going to pull it up to something like that. I'm going to keep this somewhere around here. And then another point to something like this, okay? So, yes, it, it's, you know, it, it's aggressive. We can do something like this, maybe. And that's where I'm going to keep it. OK, so for now, I'm going to take it there. And then another thing that I want to do here is I want to clean up my image. So I want to just kind of take maybe one yellow out. So I'm in my primaries right now and uh, in my offsets, I'm just going to subtract one yellow and it takes everything into that world. And if I go to my Barbie world, again, it is living more in these three quadrants, right? Like reds, magentas, and blues. So this kind of takes us there. If I do before and after, it just takes out that yellow that's not welcome in that world. Then I'm going to go back to this node right here. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go on my qualifiers. And again, these are the things that in an ideal world we don't want to do. We want to have the walls painted in that perfect hex code Barbie pink. So we don't have to do what I'm about to do. But in this example, we're going to have to do it. So I'm going to go under my 3D here. Uh, I'm going to grab that and do this. And I'm going to do this. And then um, I don't necessarily want to grab the ceiling. So I'm just going to do this. Uh, I'm going to go back to the plus and I'm going to select that. And I think for now, I'm OK with what it's doing. I'm going to go under my denoise, crank it somewhere around 31-ish. And now what I want to do is this. I'm going to just use my printer lights once again. And um, all I want to do is just keep adding magenta to it. OK, so I'm going to pull up my Barbie image and I'm just going to keep doing plus magenta. So one, two, three. And uh, once again, I'm just kind of looking at some of these tones, right? Like where does it look kind of real and it doesn't look too crazy? So some of these like right over here, like right over there or over here, we're getting in that world. So I kind of like it. Uh, let's just keep it there. OK, so let's just say I want to keep that and I come out of it. And you're like, dude, this looks so fake. 
His face is covered like it's going over onto the ceiling like it's it looks weird. So I'm going to create something like this. And I'm going to invert it and then I'm going to just soften it up a little bit. So we're going to go on the inside and we're going to do that. We're going to go on the outside. We're going to feather it out just a little bit like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm actually going to manually keyframe it. So I'm going to go here and it looks good. And I'm going to go like basically mark it and then go here and pull it up a little bit. And I'm just like looking at it and it looks good. I'm going to come back a little bit. I'm going to pull it up. It looks good. I'm going to go back, pull it up. It looks good. I'm going to go back. Pull it up. It looks good. I'm going to go all the way back here, pull it up and it looks good. And now let's just kind of go through it. OK, it latches on. It's looking good. And if you're liking what you're seeing here and want to take your grading to the next level, I got two options for you. Number one, you can watch my free webinar. It will take you from being a novice to getting very comfortable inside Resolve. And it also comes with tons of freebies. Or you can sign up for my masterclass. We have over 300 on-demand lessons. We do weekly competition that includes prizes and we have over 6,000 students. It all comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Links to all of that is in the description below. Let's get back to the video. Another thing that I want to do is I want to take out like all of the magenta that kind of spill over this handkerchief. So I'm just going to go back in here. I'm going to create a new shape and I'm just going to keep it pretty close. So something like this, and then we're just going to do that and we're going to take this off. And now I'm just going to go on the outside and just a little bit. OK, something like that. And then this one is going to be pretty easy. I'm just going to track it forward and backwards and it should latch on. I mean, resolves like tracking is the best. So that is latched on. So this is all looking really good. At this point, I'm just going to come here and we got to work on the face. So the way I'm going to handle that is this. I'm just going to right click and say, create a layer mixer. We're going to create a layer mixer and it takes away everything, but that's OK. And let's just start using the AI tools that are being available in Resolve. So I'm going to go here under Magic Mask. I'm going to go select uh, people and then under person, I'm going to go to features and I'm going to select face and I'm just going to go ahead and do this and look what happens. Boom, done. Magic. It is magic, magic mask. And then I'm just going to click on this guy and it's going to track it forwards and backwards. Done. So we had to do some manual rotoing, but then the main one, we just let this guy handle it. And now if I just come here and show you what it's doing, boom. Right. So it's like latching on and uh, it's perfect. So if I go back and forth, like we're latched on, we're looking solid so far. Right. So now one last thing that I want to do again, let's use more of Resolve's AI tools. I'm going to use their relighting tool and I want to balance out the lighting. Like remember one thing that we saw with Barbie is that even lighting and this is not what's happening here. So I'm going to go under directional lighting. I'm going to take that, pull it all the way over here and basically go in the area like where there are no lights. So we're just going to go right over here, light all those areas and come out of it. And then I want to just go under my gamma and lift it up. I'm going to lift it up too much and then I'm going to bring it down to something like that. And now what I want to do is I don't want to affect the pink. I want to affect everything else. So the easiest way to do that is send that through in here and then just go ahead and flip it. So I'm going to go under right here and then I'm just going to flip it. So it's going to affect everything but that pink. And if we look at our image now and if I were to do before and after and you can see how big of a difference it's making. Let me show you this. Even the previous version that I created, which is right here, our new version is even better than that. So this is our log. This is our X709. First thing we did, we lifted up our image. Then we went and created a very pushed look as much as we could have pushed our image. And then I went and uh, brought down the other side to kind of even everything out. And um, we qualified our wall to get that Barbie pink and then we isolated our face, tracked everything, and then finally used the relight tool uh, to bring everything else up. This is what we ended up creating. So, like, I mean, if you're thinking that it's like a little too cooled off, I mean, I kind of think so, right? Like, especially if I look at it on this side, I'm like, okay, maybe this is not so 
warm Barbie pink. It's more going a little bit too bluish magenta. I would just go under my qualifier and what I would do is I would just add one yellow. What else can we do? Can we add one more red into our qualifier? So I'm just doing that. I just pumped in one more red and I don't mind that. Like, look at what it did. So it's like taking out the access blue that it had and it's swinging everything into like warmer pinks as we can see right here. So I'm like actually liking this a lot more. Guys, if you have any content suggestions, drop them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.